We would like to introduce to you Janice Ian. <laughs> I believe in the power of art, Janice Ian once said. I believe it can heal the broken in spirit, give strength to the fragile, ease the weary soul. For decades now, Janice Ian's art has done exactly that for countless fans around the world. For Ian, songwriting began at the age of 12. Raised on a farm in New Jersey, Janice Eddie Fink was attracted to folk music and counted Odetta and Joan Baez as her earliest role models. She changed her name to Janice Ian when she was 13. When she was 14, a guidance counselor realized Ian was happiest when she was writing. She told the administration I needed heavy counseling, Ian remembered. Then let me sit outside her office and write, instead of attending classes. In those sessions, Ian wrote a song about an interracial couple she'd seen on the school bus imagining the disapproval and hypocrisy of the women's family and teachers. She succeeded in recording and releasing the song, and soon left school to pursue her music career. That first release, Society's Child, brought Ian early success, but also taught her some sobering lessons about America. She endured negative press, disruptions at her concerts, and even death threats due to its depiction of an interracial couple. And the song was banned in many radio markets. But an unlikely ally turned up to help Leonard Bernstein, the country's foremost composer and conductor who invited Ian to perform the song on a CBS TV special about rock music. That introduction of the song to a national audience took the song to number 14 on the charts, and the album Janice Ian was nominated for a Grammy in the folk category. I think that's quite a remarkable job for a girl of your age, and I congratulate you on what I'm sure is going to be a brilliant career. Thank you. Ian continued to write and sing, tour and record, but she didn't have another hit for almost a decade. As she later told the Grammy Awards, I wrote my first song at 12 was published at 13, made a record at 14, had a hit at 15, and was a has-been at 16. I learned the truth at 17 That love was meant for beauty queens Appropriately, her next big success was called At 17, a song about the cruelty of adolescence. It made it to number three on the charts. In October 1975, Ian performed it on the very first episode of a new sketch comedy show called Saturday Night Live. Ugly girls like me, it's 17. The song won a Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Performance, despite competition from Judy Collins, Linda Ronstadt, Olivia Newton-John, and Helen Reddy. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time. Ian spent the next years honing her skills while touring, performing, recording, and writing. She wrote music for films like Foxes and The Bell Jar, and continued releasing albums and singles. They didn't yield any more hits in the U.S., although in Japan, Australia, and elsewhere, she charted regularly. Breaking with her major label, she effectively had a hiatus from recording, with no U.S. releases between 1981 and 1992, largely due to a series of personal and financial setbacks. But nothing could stop the music. She summed it up in an interview with guitar player. Everybody could take everything away from me, but they couldn't take my talent. Janice Ian's talent is, of course, prodigious. Her songs have been covered by artists as varied as Nina Simone, Spooky Tooth, Celine Dion, Camel, and even her early idol, Joan Baez. Her expressive singing won her that 1975 Grammy Award, along with many other awards and nominations. She notes that, as a woman, she gets less credit than she deserves for being a brilliant instrumentalist and band leader. But she doesn't let it bother her. As she told A&R Insider, Chick Corea thinks I'm a wonderful pianist. Chet Atkins thinks I'm a wonderful guitarist. How much does the rest matter? Ian applied all these talents to her 1993 comeback album, Breaking Silence. 
Sounding positive and empowered, she tackled tough and traumatic subjects like spousal abuse, incest, and the Holocaust. She also broke her silence about her own sexuality, confirming that my tilt is toward women. Her partner, Pat Snyder, stood behind her and helped finance the recording. The two later married and remain together today. As she later said in a song, I've led a fascinating life, had a husband and a wife. Breaking Silence earned another Grammy nomination and began a new phase of Janice Ian's career. Working mostly with smaller labels, including her own Rude Girl Records, she gradually came back toward her folk roots, working with great producers and artists like Ani DeFranco and John Jennings, and with pioneers of Americana like Willie Nelson and Chet Atkins. Her folk homecoming was signaled especially on the 2006 album Folk is the New Black, which Rude Girl called a return to Janice's folk roots and a true folk album, sparse but tasteful instrumentation underneath powerful lyrics of social and political commentary. Ian began exploring new vistas as a writer, publishing a regular column about queer life in The Advocate and several science fiction stories. In 2008, she published her autobiography, Society's Child. The audio version won her a second Grammy for spoken word album. To say this is a stunning upset would be an understatement. Janice Ian's latest recording, The Light at the End of the Line, is intended to be her swan song. I'd never managed to make an entire album that felt like it lived up to the talent I was lucky enough to be born with, she said. That is, until The Light at the End of the Line. I'm Still Standing is like the opposite of At 17, flipping the bird to the mean girls and accepting wrinkles and flaws as evidence of a life fully lived. When you hit the mark. Nina is an intensely personal love song to Ian's late friend Nina Simone. And Swananoa brings Ian together with John Whelan and Nola Kennedy for an impeccable Irish style elegy to place. The album brings Janice Ian full circle, earning her 10th Grammy nomination, which, like her first, is for Best Folk Album. It's a bittersweet moment, she says but a grand one. I mean, you can't ask any more than that. They call and say, come dance with me and murmur vague obscenities At ugly girls like me at 17 